The reincarnation of Albert Einstein. The reincarnation of Edgar Allan Poe. Eight legendary mascots and a lot of great opinions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sports Show Opinions Edition. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Sports sport Show. Sports Show. Singular. Only one sport at a time. But we're going to cover several today. We have a new format today. We're going to cover cover several topics with our guest expert here, Julia Dapper. And that's going to lead us into a tournament where she is going to pick a winner from a field of candidates and contestants. We have our on-site, um, oh God. We have our on-site commentator, Sybil the Cat. She's already tried to sabotage our production by ripping down the sign once. I suppose we should jump right into it then co-host. Sounds good. Today's show brought to us by What the Shell. Mm. I'm still waiting to see a check. We, <laughs> we've been plugging them for how many episodes? All two? Bruh. And I've still not seen a single deposit from them. There's a downturn in business this quarter. So. I wonder why. Topic. Uh, we now head into the squared circle. The boxing ring. Ooh! Mm -hmm. We have a... Uh, I don't know if I would call it an epic fight, but it'll certainly be noteworthy and will get a lot of attention. Scheduled for later this year. It's an odd one because one of our contestants was a multi-time world champion heavyweight boxer as a professional during his career. The other is a, what, an influencer or something? I oh, is it Jake Paul? Yeah. Jake Paul going against Mike Tyson. Jake <sighs> Paul, age 27, stands six foot one inch. Mike... 57. Wow. Five feet, 10 inches. Last fought professionally in 2005. That was 19 years ago. Jake Paul was 16. Uh, but Jake Paul fancies himself a professional fighter. I can tell you from hearing some uh, boxers in sports talk interviews, they are praying that Mike Tyson knocks Jake Paul's head off. I do have to agree with these other wannabe sports commentators. Right. I think that it would be incredibly funny if Jake Paul dies from this. <laughs> I don't care if that's like a bad thing to say. I do think that would be really you funny. And a very fitting end for someone Bruh. who wants this Bruh. much attention Bruh. this bad. Um, I will say, however, so yeah, Mike Tyson, he's the best. He's terrifying. He ate someone's ear. He's a menace to society, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, his age does play into this. Him being like 30 years older than... And the fight was postponed by several months because Mike suffered a medical incident oh while during an a airplane flight. That says you're 57 years old. Yeah. So my thing is, if I were Jake, which thank God and Jesus I'm not, <laughs> if I were Jake Paul and I really wanted to make myself look legitimate, like an actual athlete, and I wanted to be taken seriously, my way of being taken seriously would probably not be to bring an almost senior citizen out of retirement to beat him up. Either one of two things is going to happen, or well, three. One, the match just doesn't happen. One thing or another stops it from going through, and then both of them will claim, oh, I could have won if, if only I had the chance. Two, Jake Paul loses and gets killed by Mike Tyson, which would be the ideal outcome. Or three, Jake Paul beats Mike Tyson. But is that really such an achievement? If you are 30 years younger than him and he is actively having health problems, right. it's like, yeah, take that, <laughs> hospital-ridden old man. I knew I could beat you up. That doesn't make him look good. That doesn't make him look like a legitimate athlete, right. in my opinion. And it is correct. Mike is old enough. He gets free metro transit in some yeah. cities. Meal discounts at places like Perkins, mm -hmm. I would expect. Yeah, so. you've seen him there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens we, with that one. We will see what happens. Yeah. I think what's most likely going to happen is that this fight is never going to actually take place. It's somewhat amazing that it's even being sanctioned because so what what's next on the agenda uh this may be the debate of the century it could lead to the end of sports show <laughs> i don't i don't put myself in the same category of expertise with sports opinions as you but we're going to mildly debate the next topic okay we can do that the next topic is the cancellation of one joey chestnut <gasps> professional eating champion from participating in this year's Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest oh my God. on the 4th of July. I, this has occupied my brain every waking moment since I heard this news. So can you tell us why did Nathan's 
suspend or cancel Joey from being able to participate. Okay, Joey Chestnut has dominated the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest every 4th of July for the past few years. 16 times he's won it. Yeah. And every time he wins by a margin of like 40 hot dogs, like no one is even kind of close to like tying with him. He's the best. He's, I, it's not like offensive to call him a freak of nature, right? He's, he's doing things no other human can do. I respect him for that. He scares me so bad. Every time I see a picture of him, I start shaking and crying. <laughs> From what I understand, and I did extensive research on this because this is something that fucking matters. Nathan's hot dogs, they are disqualifying or banning Joey from competing because he did a brand deal with a competing brand. But the competing brand is beyond meat. And I did extensive research on this. That plant-based meat alternative for vegan people. Joey did some like brand deal with them because you know, he is famous for eating anything and everything. So they banned him because he was like in cahoots with their enemy. Where they're like, oh, you can't eat any other kind of hot dogs. I'm sorry, is that not like tyrannical to anyone else? Is that not insane? If I might. Oh God. I will offer my counterparts <laughs> echoing the delivery of the late Johnny Cochran. Oh my God. And these will be brief. Basically Shakespearean sonnets almost. Beef in the bun, and let me know it. Nathan's hot dogs are all beef. Beef in the bun is how it gets done. That was your rebuttal that you've been hyping up? Oh, he's got more. If there's no meat, you're just a cheat. Okay, I know you have more, but I'm gonna interject here for a Please. second. One, this just sounds insane from Nathan's perspective. Like, in order to compete in this hot dog eating contest one day of the year, you have to like kiss the ring of Nathan's hot dogs every single other day of the year or else like you're blacklisted, like you're sent to the wall. How is that like a logical, reasonable, level-headed response from any brand? Oh boy. <laughs> to take a bow, start eating cow. Hire him right now. <laughs> no beef in the bun? Have a seat, son. <laughs> My other point in this stupid ass debate. So the reason that Nathan's gives is because Joey is teaming up with a competitor's brand. Bitch, in what world is beyond meat? Plant-based meat for vegan people, a competitor with a, an all-beef hot dog brand. The, the people who are be buying Nathan's hot dogs probably wouldn't be buying Beyond anyway. And the people who are buying vegan meat were never going to buy Nathan's hot dogs. They're two completely separate products. They, they're not competitors. It's Beyond for you? <laughs> I say Joey who? <laughs> How many of these do you have? That's it. Oh, okay. To counter your last point in non-rhyming form, oh. very confusing packaging. I walk into the store, I see a package of dogs, I grab them. Next it thing it you know, may you're be eating. beyond, and all of a sudden I'm not eating my beef dogs. Disappointing 4th of July. Can you read? Can you look at the packaging and see that it says plant-based? That's like all their advertising is that there's no meat in it. The presentation though, just look like dogs. Right now, you are actually making a very compelling argument for Beyond Meat, oh. because their whole thing is that it's like eating meat without eating meat. They're gonna be eating meat without Joey, am I right? <laughs> and the, the other thing, now the hot dog eating contest is gonna be so mid, I won't be watching this so, year. So, counter-programming is that Netflix is bringing Joey together against his longtime legendary rival, Takirin Kobayashi. <laughs> Joey's 40, Kobayashi 46, Kobayashi a four, or a, excuse me, six time Nathan's champion before various controversies kind of booted him out of professional eating contests. He'll be back, it'll be this fall, Joey and Kobayashi will be going at it on television. I'll be tuning in to mm. that, me personally. Sidebar topic, and this is one where you've been an opinion leader and the sports talk world basically is talking about your opinions on mm -hmm. this one. And that is um, 
go to the sport in particular of hockey. Hockey is about the only sport other than straight on fights, uh, such as boxing, mixed martial arts, etc. Hockey is a sport where at the professional level for men, fighting is allowed. There are mm-hmm. minor penalties associated with it, but you can continue playing in that game. You, let's, we're making you commissioner of the NHL, the National Hockey League. For Finally. Game, and it's put on your desk. What are we going to do about fighting? Your response? I'm so glad you asked. Mm. So obviously, we don't want our players fighting. We want to disincentivize this. But what we're doing so far has not disincentivized it enough. And so my proposed solution is that we tell all the players, everyone knows, everyone's in on it, that fighting is completely allowed. All fighting, no matter how brutal and violent and unfair. But the catch is none of the refs can step in to stop the fight. So once the fight starts, you can't get tired and then say like, this isn't worth it. No. If you start a fight, you have to finish it. And by finish it, I mean the fight has to continue until one of the players is unconscious. (laughs) As many people as they want can get involved. But once you join the fight, you can't leave it. Oh, and one last thing. Once the fight is done, any player who is injured, even a little bit, is benched for the rest of the game. You don't get to play today at all. Wow. If we, like, seriously, like, derailed their day, I think that you could get the message through to these guys that it's not worth it. It's not worth it to shove someone if I know that this means I might get knocked the fuck out. First response is I'm shocked you're not commissioner of a league of some kind. I've sent so many emails. With level-headed thoughts like that. Second is your league is then condoning almost guaranteed concussions for the loser of the fight. Yep. (laughs) There's a thing called in hockey fighting called turtling. And that is where if a guy starts punching me and I don't want to fight him and I know that I'm going to get mm-hmm. beat up, I just drop to my knees and cover up my head, basically resembling a turtle. Mm-hmm. I want nothing to do with this fight. Now, of course, in that case, officials are coming to break yeah. it up. In your world, so the star scorer of Team A mm-hmm is attacked by the tough guy of Team B, Team A player, Turtles, but the fight must go on. Is that what you're saying, Commissioner? This is a good point you brought up. I'm glad you're raising this issue. Naturally, we have to have a safety net for this because the star player of Team A shouldn't be punished. If they're like the one being targeted, they shouldn't have to pay with injuries. So if someone starts turtling, naturally all the refs will have tasers so that they can go up and end the fight for them. Obviously, getting tased is going to injure you, meaning that the player who started like hitting someone, they're out of the game for the rest of the game. And what if the tased tough guy from Team B loses control of his bowels once tased? What? Then, naturally, we're going to point to that. <laughs> camera on him so everyone can point and laugh. So an additional (laughs) penalty of public humiliation. Uh, Instead of just saying, don't fight, fighting is wrong, we want to show that fighting is wrong and there's no real winners. Again, judicious and sane, as always, level-headed viewpoints that you bring to the table. If anyone wanted to nominate me for President of the United States, I would consider it. So the next topic uh, is about a new professional sports league that uh, took an interesting approach to its first season Hmm. on ice. It is the Professional Mm. Women's Hockey League. Well, the the season that ended after the, uh, the past winter with Minnesota as the champion, there were six teams. Interestingly, none of the teams had nicknames nor mascots. They were simply known by their city name. Your view. My view is sexism is alive and well that the women didn't get mascots right off the bat. Are you serious? The whole point of going to any game is to watch the guy in the costume do backflips. The figurehead leader of the league was a legendary woman pro athlete. Did she let him down? Yes, I think so. What if they had all female mascots like that Ellie the twerking elephant? Remember her? That's great. Just make them regular mascots, but put eyelashes on them. So this coming year, season two, they are expected to have nicknames for the teams and mascots. And that leads us to today's tournament. Ooh. Today's tournament is mascots, which 
I know some of your subscribers have asked for. Yes, over a year ago, the last time I uploaded a sports show, the demand was super high. I am, I've been kind of on a roll with my whole book review thing, and more of those will be coming, but we got a whopping two comments requesting another sports show, and so we had to give the people what they want. I'm ready to see these freaks of nature. All right, so we've got a uh, eight mascot field unseated because uh, I didn't want to prejudge and have them seated, so we're going to let you actually draw blindly, and we'll see who goes against each other. And in tournament form, we'll get down to a winner. I do want to warn the audience, if you do have children watching, you might want to avert their eyes because some of these mascots are freak city. All right, so you go ahead and draw two. All right. I draw the Purdue Boilermaker and the Montgomery Biscuits of Minion League Baseball. Minor. <laughs> so let's start with a, re a review of the mascots that we have. The Boilermaker, freak of nature, horrid, horrible, disgusting. My God, I don't like that the blue of his eyes takes up his whole eyeball. He looks like one of those dogs that looks like a human. <laughs> also, I don't like that you can see his human legs. <laughs> like... I don't like remembering that there's a human inside the mascot. Don't put them fucking fangs out here for me to see with your leg hairs. Well, he looks pretty sad about it, so. Yeah. My thing with mascots is, since the point of a mascot is to kind of have like a little sports persona or whatever, it shouldn't be a human. The human ones always mm. look so weird. They do. And this is just one example of it. We've got multiple examples oh. of that in today's field. Okay, so yeah, this guy so far, bottom. Okay. Bottom of the barrel, right. absolutely. And the next one is the Montgomery Biscuits. The Montgomery, Alabama minor league baseball team. At their ballpark, they sell biscuits. They believe they are the only stadium selling biscuits. And unfortunately for all of us, yeah. oh, this biscuit is so cute! I love this guy. Aww. Right off the bat, this is the best one. I mean, obviously, up against the Boilermaker, I prefer the biscuit any day. Unfortunately, I do have to take into account that the literal biscuit with the little butter and mouth is not their actual like infield mascot. I can't find any pictures of a biscuit costume, what? which is a damn cry and shame. Oh. However, they do have the <laughs> this other Snuffleupagus ass yeah. guy. He's fine. He's yeah. all right. I think he's a pretty standard middle of the road mascot. But does the controversial fact that it's not a biscuit costume eliminate that? Oh, that's true. Because that's more like an anteater wearing a Biscuits jersey yeah. than a Biscuit. And why does he have boxing gloves on? Who is he beating up? <laughs> it's hard to judge this one because I don't know what I'm judging. Because all of the other ones are the physical costumes that were sewn together. I think I have to not take in the Biscuit, the cute little Biscuit wow. one that I love. Wow. I'm going to be judging this anteater thing. And so far, he is... Infinitely better than the Boilermaker. But I am disappointed that he is not, in fact, an enormous sentient biscuit. So, did we get a ruling from you? This guy. He's the winner. Yeah. Okay, your next two competitors. All right, we have the St. Louis University Bilkins Mystical Good Luck Cardinal. What the fuck? What, the <laughs> what is this? What does it say? The St. Louis University Billiken. Mm. And it's a mythical good luck creature that represents things as they ought to be, which is... But, oh! That is not how I want things to be. He's not even a creature, he's like just a symbol. Mythical creature. I don't know how a creature represents how things ought to be. That's... I mean, do they mean all white? <laughs> That's on you. Is I don't that know. the controversial statement they're making? I, I don't know about that, St. Louis. Let's see our other guy. The Western Kentucky University Big Red Hills Topper. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. Finally, <laughs> an actually good mascot. This is exactly like the gritty category of just put some colorful piece of shit out there and have that be our mascot. I respect this a lot more than. The people who put so much thought and effort into it, like, the Billiken is a symbol of prosperity. Shut the hell up. Just put some funny little guy out on the field to scare my children. Kind of looks like he's smiling. Yeah. So, friendly enough. again, I brought kids to the ball game. I don't know who's kids, but anyway, <laughs> this guy, 
can approach him and they're going to be delighted. Yeah. Opposed to a billiken. No, nobody wants a bill. Oh my gosh, he's in cahoots with Grimace? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We have not been sponsored by McDonald's, so no right. free clout. Between these two, it's obvious. The big red thing wins. Okay. The superior mascot. All right, All right your next two. And I want to thank our research team in the basement for preparing these entry cards. Sorry we haven't let you out or fed you recently. Yeah. Okay, so we have Prizes. Paris Olympic mascots. Oh, hell no. I get mad just thinking about them. And the New Orleans baby cakes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one thing at a time. Let's start with the France one. So for the Parisian Olympics, they have created mascots based on hell a no. cap that rebellion freedom fighters used to wear, and thus this cap represents freedom. This is a very generous interpretation right. of this thing. Uh, me personally, when I think of French people fighting for their freedom, I don't think of a hat. I think of one very specific tool of hardware that has only in recent years gone out of style for executing prisoners. <laughs> Since they want two yeah. characters so bad, yeah. the blade can be one and the wooden thing can be another. Right. I think if they had just gone with either the guillotine or have just a head with little mm. legs, I would have loved that. That would have been perfect. So yeah, this I think is a solid, like below average mascot. If they didn't tell me that it was supposed to be a hat, I wouldn't get it. I guess when I see a picture of the hat, it's based on i'm like sure do you, do you think it's gonna revive hat sales red hat sales in france bitch no <laughs> or and also the people in france it sounds like don't want the damn olympics mm. in their country to begin with right so you might want a hat like that if you're doing the triathlon and swimming in the seine river huh? oh my god so, and yeah. you know who else is gonna be swimming in the seine river <laughs> the president of france and the mayor of paris allegedly to prove that all the tax dollars didn't go to waste trying to make that sewage pit healthy <laughs> enough to swim in <laughs> see that's, this is what I respect about French people. When they don't like their government, they know how to make their point known. They don't mess around with this like, I'm gonna tweet about this. No, they say, I'm shitting publicly in the river. I'm cutting someone's head off and I'm taking a shit in public. And if you have a problem with that, I'll cut your head off too. All right, let's see. Oh God, baby so cakes. So the New Orleans baby cakes, a minor league baseball team's mascot. But this, oh. this mascot gets a lot of mileage. It appears in a lot of sporting events. Oh. Child friendly, would you say? No, this is nothing friendly. He's riding a scooter indoors with no helmet. This whole thing just seems like sickening, perverted almost. He should have big beads around that baby's neck. Oh, I see a lot of pictures of oh. him with beads, which I don't like even more. Right. Especially don't like the fact that he has a gigantic diaper on. I don't know why that crosses the line for me. Head into the sun. Head I guess. <laughs> so in this round, a hat versus the baby cake. I'm hearing negative views about each. So I don't like either of them. Who advances? Oh my gosh. Our criteria is which is the best mascot, which is best at representing their team in an enjoyable way. Neither of them are enjoyable. And I don't think either of them succeed at representing their team or representing their location either. Because when I think of New Orleans, I don't think of an enormous baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going with the hats. Wow. Just this baby cakes is so <laughs> distressing to look at. I don't want to see him anymore. <laughs> Our final pairing. We have the Stanford University, mm. the Stanford tree, and which the Wasswak? Oh. oh, 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 let me read that. Please. Wichita State University, they are called the Shockers, as in I'm gathering wheat at harvest. Yeah. Maybe, maybe playing <laughs> professional chess, if you know what we mean. <laughs> Their mascot is called Wooshock, W Shock. And you will be shocked. Oh, no, I don't like this guy at all. <laughs> I don't like anything about this. Also, I didn't know that a bundle of wheat was called a shock to begin with. <laughs> Comment below if this is common knowledge. I gotta say, oh, <laughs> I like <just> got scared. <laughs> I like got scared looking at a picture of it. Um, I gotta say, I respect the craftsmanship of this thing. Like you can tell a lot of work was put into every disgusting wrinkle on his horrible face. It, it does represent a shock of wheat. Yeah, I guess so. Humanized. Too humanized. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a human being that got turned into wheat against his will. Might've gone through the harvesting He's machine. He's mad as hell. Oh my gosh. So 
Is this kid friendly? No. I think that this is better than some of the craftsmanship of other mascots, but I, the craftsmanship all went was used for evil. All right. And the last one is the tree, right? The Stanford tree. So Stanford, they simply go by the cardinal. But the pep band has uh, the mascot that is known as the tree or the Stanford tree. Hell no. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> sucks so bad. I like how you can completely see the human being <laughs> under it and you can see that he's wearing like basketball shorts. <laughs> oh my god. No, that is so ass. <laughs> that is so impressively bad. So is Stanford University like running out of money or something? Might be now, but yeah, apparently uh... now. I just cannot get over how shitty this costume is. Just like from a design standpoint, why can I see the people in the background standing behind him through him? It is in keeping with the pep band, which is iconoclastic. They march in sport coats and wear the hat like mm -hmm. you see on top of the tree. Do iconoclastic, sometimes controversial halftime shows at uh, football games. And in fact, in one of the most delightful endings of the rival game with UCAL Berkeley, the Stanford band went onto the field early before the game was over and got in the way of a winning touchdown <laughs> by UCAL Berkeley. So they just cheated? They just broke the rules? No, the band aired by going on the field before oh. the play was over. <laughs> That's even funny. And, and so they got in the purpose. way. Maybe their players were unable to tackle the Berkeley player who scored the winning touchdown. So they lost because their mm. band fucked up so bad. I can only assume this tree asshole was the one leading the band. <laughs> the tree might have been in the midst of it. Also, I'm going to say it. I don't want to see a tree that you says is in the band unless I'm seeing him playing an instrument. I'm going to need to see a saxophone in that tree's horrible, juicy red lips. So, for the second bracket in a row, two apparently negative contestants. We've got Wooshock from Wichita State, and we've got Stanford's The Tree. Who advances? Oh, man. See, my thing is, God, every picture I see of him, it looks like some pervert trying to get kids. <laughs> trying to get kids to let their guard down. Like... Hello guys, I'm the tree! And, and pull them inside the branches. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, even though I do not like that shock of wheat one bit, I think wow. he's advancing because wow. costume is better and because of the whole wheat thing, I think that that is more in tune with representing their school okay. than this fucking ugly ass possible predator. All right. We move on to the semis and uh, the research team has noted Vegas is laying heavy favorite odds on the upper bracket, mm. which we will go to first. We've got in the semis, the Montgomery Biscuits against Western Kentucky University's Big Red. Both of which oh. scored well with you. I, I do think that both of them are good. You know what? I hate to let controversy rule in oh, my yeah. decision. I'm a very fair and balanced judge at all times, but I would have said, oh, the biscuits for mm. sure right away. But there's so much confusion and messiness around them and their brand. It's like, why is it called the biscuits when he's not a biscuit? Why is he an anteater? Why did you have two mascots when you already had one perfectly perfect mascot? I felt like the, the school was fighting me every step of the mm -hmm. way on this mascot journey. And so even though I do think that the biscuits anteater thing is better constructed mm -hmm. than the big red piece of shit, I gotta hand it to the big red piece of shit. The branding is perfect. They knew exactly what they were. They knew they hit a home run. They Pretty knew. lovable. I really wish the, the biscuits franchise would develop that biscuit costume. Yeah. It's adorable. It would sweep. If it was an actual little biscuit guy, mm -hmm. it would sweep this competition with a, for sure. With a pat of butter. With a pat of butter on yeah. his little tongue. Yeah. That's so cute. All right, we move to our very controversial, rich in negativity <laughs> semi-bracket, which has the frigious, whatever the red hat is from the Parisian Olympics. Oh my God. Going against Wusha of Wichita State University. These shockers. I was talking about how a mascot's job, it's not just to be like cute or funny, it's to represent the team or location that they're from, yeah. right? Well, when I think of French people, Aside from cutting people's heads off and shitting in rivers, mm -hmm. I do not think of them as, and this is just, this is just a stereotype. This is just from what I've heard and seen. I don't think of them as being super duper happy, smiley, friendly people, mm -hmm. you know? 
And when I see this little smiley hat, all I can think is, you are not actually from France. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you moved there, mm -hmm. but no French person would walk around full cheese in this much. However, the shocker is just so, I don't know why this one in particular is so threatening to me. Oh man, if I have to choose between these two, I'm the real victim here. I'm gonna go with the shockers. I think I have wow. too many problems with that little red French hat. I'm, I'm just tired of giving them a break and like giving them a pass, you know? Whereas the shocker guy is unapologetically the worst thing I've ever seen. So we've gotten to our final pairing and the research team says, this one is off the board in Vegas. They will not even lay odds on it because they just think it's not a fair fight. Oh, really? So we've got Big Red from <laughs> Western Kentucky University against Wu Shock oh, wow. from Wichita State University. So Big Red versus the Shock Wu of Wu. I mean, what do you want me to say? One of them is a very simple, cute little circle thing and the other one is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be at a party with that shocker. I would absolutely want to be in a karaoke booth with that big red thing. The big red wins this round. All right, okay, that was clear. So uh, that's your first foray into mascots. Now, any of these, including big red, that you think would be appropriate for a professional women's hockey league team? I think a lot of them would be. Maybe uh, next time we have you come up with some ideas for the professional based on We'll go city by city. Yeah! You can take the city identity mm -hmm. and turn it into a mascot. Yes, if All anyone right. if anyone can positively represent a bunch of people who I don't know, it's me. I would say, with this new format, this experimental format we're trying mm -hmm. out, I would say this was a smashing success. I think that we had 100% correct opinions. As you did note, you're so fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. I mean, very sane viewpoints just as i referenced other sports talk programs on various platforms they're going to be turning to you for their lead advice and even though i personally don't like the decadence of them talking about sports though i think that it should be sport only i will let them in mm. and give them my opinion knowledge is power guys and when you have thoughts this good you can't keep them to yourself Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. It's been a whole episode and I haven't even brought up Tanya Harding. Mm -hmm. Gotta run. No way! Tanya Harding is the actual winner of the mascot competition. He's the best.